the film that's being heralded as kicking off the summer movie series this year in 2024 is that of The Fall Guy, which stars Ryan Gosling and Emily Blunt. Their chemistry is the big selling point of this film. Did it deliver? We're here with our spoiler thoughts. I am Tim Melton. That is John Lunsford. John, got a chance to see The Fall Guy here very recently. It's a movie that I do not feel like you are overly happy about. <laughs> I feel like you're trying to make it seem more negative for me. I like the movie. Fine. Um, I think you, you just made it sort of negative for yourself with that <laughs> statement. Saying I like the movie. I like the movie. Fine. Yeah, that's not a big rousing <laughs> endorsement. Um, Ryan Gosling is, you know, on top of the world right now. Emily Blunt um, is a really good actress. Just nominated for an Oscar as well. Um, Hannah Waddingham off Ted Lasso, Winston Duke coming off the MCU and has done a couple other good projects. I mean, there's a lot to like about the actors of this movie. Um, there's a lot to like of this movie from a date night perspective. And I think that's enough. We have a couple of other panelists here joining the conversation. That is Jam and Jeff, who's still here in studio with us and the one and only Tyler Lionel Johns, Mr. Jeff, let me start with you. You right. love the 1980s television series that is about the stunt performers that this is loosely based off of. Yeah. And there were some nods to your fandom. Yeah. At they, the, especially at the end of this adventure that you really liked. Yeah. They had the original truck. They had an updated version of the truck. They managed to squeeze the original uh, theme song in there and a couple of cameos. So... It hit all the retro notes for me so there. You, you were satisfied with how they paid respect to the source yeah, material. I thought they did a good job. And Tyler, you didn't even know there was source material to be have respect paid to. Correct. Because you were just going into this thing thinking it was completely fresh property. And I think you're not alone. I think tons of people are going to be going in thinking this is completely fresh property and wondering what's happening with all of these applause moments that are occurring in theaters as people watch this thing what did you think of it from that perspective uh i thought it was pretty fun i had no idea that lee majors was in a show called fall guy i only knew of him from a six million dollar man but this was a lot of fun a lot of hollywood references uh references to plenty of movies and then all these little tricks where they're talking about the production of the film while also pulling those tricks off on screen and uh it was a fun experience. It was I, fine. I am glad that you enjoyed it. <clears throat> I don't want to try to change anyone's opinion on this. If you've seen me on this platform before, you know that this is not a movie that I enjoyed. Did not find it to be funny. Did not find it to be romantic. Did not find it to be engaging. Didn't like the chemistry on the screen. Didn't Tell laugh you really a single feel. time. <laughs> There's nothing about this movie I liked. Absolutely nothing. The action in the stunts, to me, felt like they had more of a weight to them than the actual action that was threatening the stuntman's life throughout this. Nothing of this worked for me, including Aaron Taylor Johnson, who I hope does not get the role of James Bond because I don't think I can put up with him for an entire decade or so making James Bond movies. There's nothing that I walked away from this movie feeling positive about, and that is a pretty damning thing to say just for me. I hope everyone enjoys it. I hope it's a huge hit. Theaters need a hit. I'm rooting for it, but it is not a film that I can sign off on. I wanted it to be more Tropic Thunder-esque, not necessarily in its raunchiness, but in its effectiveness with being a Hollywood movie about Hollywood with actors in perilous situations. And I just never felt fully got that feeling. I would rather watch Tropic Thunder a hundred times more than I would this movie, the fall guy, John, how successful do you think this is going to be with audiences? Obviously I think I'm going to be way in the minority when it comes to how this film is received by audiences. I do think you'll be in the minority. I think the, uh, you know, whether we, live or die or agree with uh, Rotten Tomatoes and the various review outlets out there. It is what sways people to potentially go view a movie. It has been critically well received. Um, most of the early feedback, which obviously don't have a ton yet because opening weekend hadn't happened yet. As of this recording, most early feedback has been like, yeah, it was, you know, it was a cute enough movie. It was, it was cool enough. I haven't seen anybody with quite the negative opinion that you've had, but um, you know, I, I think it is, Going in, the presumption was, hey, this has enough 
of a little bit for everybody that it's got the romantic comedy for the females. It's got the action for the males. So it's perfect date night movie. It's not overly violent. It's not overly, you know, cute that it has its, it's, it's moments on both sides of the spectrum and does both well. And I think ultimately accomplished that accomplishes that the average, uh, you know, I feel with the Barbenheimer movement, part of what made it work was the guy could go see Oppenheimer. The girl could go see Barbie and both would leave the theater happy enough. And maybe they end up seeing the other movie too. And ultimately they did both movies greatly benefited from the other one. Um, I think this kind of is that ultimate collaboration with two Oscar nominated actors from those movies coming together that do have good chemistry. They played it up at the Oscars. They've, they've played it up in the marketing. And I think it really and truly does have that enough to offer. So word of mouth, you know, I don't know because planet of the apes comes out next week. And so that's a bigger blockbuster movie that I would have assumed regardless would outpace it financially, but you know, maybe word of mouth is enough to where it's a really solid, respectable two behind it to where it still ultimately ends up making money and is ultimately successful, but who knows? Maybe so Jeff, what was the funniest moment of the movie for you? Is there one thing that when you think back, you think, okay, that is the moment that landed landed hardest for me when thinking back to the jokes that were done. I thought there was, you know, it was pretty funny all along. I don't think it was like, I just, a gut buster laugh anywhere but that that uh scene where they were in the guy's condo fighting the guys that had come in on him and they he had a gun with the blanks and the other guy had the rubber sword or whatever the rubber axe i I thought that was kind of funny yeah the blanks where ryan gosling then has to play dead basically yeah 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 yeah, that's it makes no sense for him to really get up at that point and then run up the stairs rather than just if he believes you're dead actually play dead and then maybe sneak out at a more opportune time but I, you can't this, overthink this, this movie. This is not a film <laughs> where you're supposed to take logic into it. There were yeah. multiple moments where I'm like, logistically, that doesn't yeah. make any you sense. Get us to spend your belief. I, I get it. You just want to go in and have fun, turn off your brain. Maybe this is a perfect film for you. Yeah. I, I couldn't do it with this one. Tyler, I know I'm being highly critical of this thing. I just want to hear from you, though, what you thought the funniest part of the movie was. Uh, funniest part of the movie was either that uh, scene that Jeff is talking about or just uh, the dialogue between Ryan Gosling and Winston Duke. I really love their relationship and them always quoting different movies to each other and trying to guess it, and that was just really entertaining to me. Am Maybe I- not funny in like the traditional sense of setting up a joke with a punchline, but I laughed. Am I correct that the thing that got the most laughs in our theater was the unicorn bit when he was high on oh, drugs? That got, yeah, that got a lot of laughs and as well. They, she made a replay of that stunt scene over and over. That was pretty funny too. Yeah. That yeah. Was good. No, that was, that was good. I do think Winston Duke could do like a really good buddy cop movie. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, somewhere along the way. Like, I agree. Everything he's known for right now is Black Panther and Us, I guess, are really the only two things yeah. he's really, really known for. He's really good in that, was it Nine Days movie? Yes, that, you I know, love that movie. He he can be a really good actor. He's really big, like broad frame to where he doesn't fit a lot of roles necessarily. But I think there's a lot more that could be done with him. And he was just very much a side character in this, but you know, the way he interacted, I'm not saying doing it with Ryan Gosling necessarily, but I feel like there's like a cool buddy cop movie you can pull out of Winston Duke and somebody like Ryan Gosling there in the future. Um, I thought that, uh, Stephanie Sue, however you say her name is, the the daughter from Everything Everywhere All at Once was kind of underutilized in this because she was literally just nominated for an Oscar two years ago. And then it's a name that's like, oh, that's that girl from that movie that then she's in it for like one scene pretty much. And that's yeah. it. Um, I thought uh, Hanning, Hannah Waddingham, who was on Game of Thrones, but really came to uh, kind of mainstream appeal with Ted Lasso. Um, doesn't look good as a brunette, number one. And number two, because she was blonde and everything else. And number two, um, didn't exactly fit the role super well. I feel like that was more of a hiring of yeah. the of the moment. Um, she is a really good actress. It was really good in Ted Lasso, but um, but Winston Duke, Emily Blunt, Ryan Gosling, and then I've already made my my uh, opinion clear on Aaron Taylor Johnson with the whole Bond thing. The minute the name was announced, I was like, hell no, when that happened. And I think now we're all on the same page of hell no with that. But uh, really good casting. That ultimately them just being good at their craft, whether the story ultimately works or not is entertaining enough for me to sit there and enjoy the movie john what'd you think of the soundtrack for this movie um, obviously taylor <laughs> swift a big part of yeah. him uh, listening to all too well scene. while crying you know was a, a funny <laughs> bit there as well i feel like for the females in the audience that's when it was like 
Taylor Swift. Even my wife was like, <laughs> yeah. they're using Taylor Swift in this Woke movie. Woke everybody up from their non-comedy coma that they were yeah. in. It was like 15 minutes in the movie. So it was okay. not 15 but minutes in the movie. That was pretty early it was in the pretty movie. pretty early in the movie. It was, it was more than 15 <laughs> minutes. 16, excuse me. But, um, no, I mean, I, I thought the soundtrack was good. I feel like it was, you know, had a very purposeful soundtrack of songs that we know. Um, you know, this movie exists to be a good date night movie. It doesn't exist to win Oscars. It doesn't exist to, you know, try to wow everybody. It doesn't exist to even make a billion dollars. It exists to be exactly what it is, and I think exactly what it ultimately accomplished. Okay. Uh, Tyler, what did you think of the dog repeatedly biting people in the Miranda <laughs> Tate area? <laughs> oh, did that get a little a good, old to you? or What's that? I said, did that get a little old to no, you? Or? That joke's uh, no. No, and that joke won't get old either. Okay. Yeah. But uh, back to what John was saying about the soundtrack. I also noticed they decided to use approximately 30 different versions of I Was Made for Loving yep. You by Kiss. And I was very confused by that. It's like, why do we need so many remixes? It's better so to have remixes together. than the exact same version like yeah, that, in, uh, of Nirvana and the Batman. That that's true. Over. I'll <laughs> give you that. Wow. I thought this wouldn't be as contentious <laughs> as our Civil War review, but it's getting there. Jeff, what would you give this out of five stars? What would you give this? I'd probably give it a solid four. Four out of five. Tyler? Uh, three and a half out of five for me. Three and a half out of five. And John? I'll go three and a half. Okay, and I'm going with a one out of five for <laughs> Dang. The one of these guy. things is not like the other. I just, one of these things is Tim. I never want to see this movie again. I despised it for the most part and sat there. Jeff would look over at me constantly throughout the movie. Is he laughing yet? No, I was not. I was not laughing. Like I was never so excited for you to be behind me in a movie when they made a Fast and the Furious reference. <laughs> <laughs> Multiple Fast and Furious references, <laughs> literally in the first like 10 minutes, knowing that Jeff and I share the common bond of Fast yeah. and the Furious. And I turned around and I was like, eh, eh. Tim wanted to murder not only me, but everybody else in that entire theater at that point. And I was like, Tim's not going to like this movie. And sure enough, Tim doesn't know how to have fun. I got to know, Tim. You true. give this movie a one. What did you end up giving Abigail? Because that was borderline unwatchable at I, points. I think I gave Abigail a two out of five, I think. Oh. And saying no. this movie is worse than Argyle, Argyle is an abomination to cinema. I think that Argyle is a better film than The Abigail Fall Guy. Abigail is worse than both And I have no apologies Yikes. for saying that. And there are, I know there are other people that will agree with me on Fall Guy, but I'm not even looking for agreements. I'm just going to always be honest with you about how the film did for me. If I go into a comedy, whether it is an action comedy, romantic comedy, a date night comedy, however you want to put it, it's supposed to be a comedy, and I don't laugh one time, then it just does not work for me. I'm not saying that it will be that way for everybody. I'm saying it did not work for me. So that is where we will leave the fall guy, unless anybody has any other closing statements you'd like to make. Oh, uh, when, uh, when they were doing the whole chase down the street and Ryan Gosling's in the dumpster. Mm -hmm. uh, how did nobody notice that? Because they, the, later in the movie, they already had you're like security use, camera footage from the logic. hotel, but nobody noticed this and come giant on, and, and dumpster we're buying being that the swung news down media, the street. The news media is going to just take the deep fake <laughs> of Ryan Gosling's face being put on Aaron Taylor Johnson's head. They and might. it's just going to Have work you seen perfectly. The news media nowadays, right. they didn't allow the 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 Princess Kate photo to go, you know, ten seconds without being called out as having been faked. So I'm not buying it at all. But anyway, that is going to be the experience of the Fall Guy, my least favorite movie that I've seen in the theater in quite a long time. That's just like your opinion, man. That is just my opinion. We would love to hear yours in the comment section below. Did you enjoy The Fall Guy starring Ryan Gosling and Emily Blunt? John, one place where everyone can be a winner. That is at our title sponsor, MyBookie. MyBookie.ag. Use promo code next round. See it right there. Promo code next round. Get that first deposit bonus on us. You can bet on the NHL playoffs, NBA playoffs, Major League Baseball. Bet on some futures. Bet on the Kentucky Derby. Bet on anything you want to. Bet anything, anytime, anywhere. With our friends, MyBookie.ag. That's going to do it for this review. Many more reviews all throughout the summer season happening right here on The Meltdown. Make sure you like this video and subscribe.